Hello, are we ready? Yeah. Okay, no, I meant him. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, the road to see what's in the way here. Okay, notice what's going on here too on this last swing. This is looking a little bit raggedy to me. Um, almost broke this. Didn't quite make the target. 786 held. You see the warning here? It didn't break above plus 100. So what we have to do here now is take our next low to high. And here's the importance of the 786s coming into play. If, if this is going to make it to target, if it continues to pull back, we need to see 2633 hold. Okay? Because if it breaks 2633, it's heading down to here at least 2529 initial. So if you're long here, you wouldn't want it to go below the 2633 at this point unless you're willing to ride out a move like that. Arguably, that would then be Gortley support. I say arguably because I really don't like to see, even on a daily chart, I don't like to see that break above this. Remember, it has to be 618 to 786. This is a little bit weaker as a Gartley because it's spiked above the 786. So this is looking a little up in the air to me. Again, if you're long, you know, on a based on a swing trade kind of thing, you wouldn't want to see 2633 break. Um, if you're trying to hold this for a much longer period of time, you definitely wouldn't want to start breaking these support extensions like 25, 29, what's this 20, particularly here, because then any potential that this is a Gartley support pattern would break down below uh, 2450 would be a problem here. Now, if this can hold, and hold the zero line, you might get a 5034Z additional long side trigger. So that would be the advantage of a hold at 2633. I want to see what the higher time frame is doing on this too, because what's a potential problem here? 786 guys, remember? From the chat room, what do I call this? The 786 congestion dance. This is a new, yeah, take notes on this one. We're going to see this tomorrow. I call this the 786 congestion dance. We came down to a 786, up to a 786, where it bounced. CCIs on that time frame are within the 100 lines, unable to penetrate in either direction of the 100 lines. That's a heads up that you're in congestion. Okay? but you possibly are going to maintain congestion too. So look for the possibility that if this 786 holds on the downside, it's just going to bounce and keep bouncing and bouncing back and forth and back and forth. This is a problem. One of the ways to solve the problem is to look at what the next higher time frame is doing. Because let's say the weekly is showing a nice uptrend and a possible plus 100 line bounce. That's fine then. But if the weekly also is bouncing around inside the CCI, meaning it's showing no sense of strong momentum in either direction, this, this is a, you know, a hands-off kind of situation. Another sign, 34 EMA is flatlined and price keeps crossing it. Yes? The market in that situation, then, would you say, well, it's congestion, yeah. and it's, it's tightening up, it's tightening up, and it's going to break out of there. When it goes out, it's going to really break. That's why I want to see the higher time frame. Or which clue, where, where's my clue, what direction it's going to go? I want to look at the higher time frame for that reason. Oh. Yeah. In other words, if, if we were setting up a trigger on the higher time frame, and then what you do is, the way I trade that also, let's say the higher time frame isn't really giving you a, a clue, and it coils, coils up and coils up. What I look for is a breakout, break of the 786, and a pullback with the new support holding and then a long side trigger. Okay, breaking out of congestion, it's always preferable to have a trigger outside of the 100 lines, 100 line bounce. That way you avoid the idea that it's a false breakout. Okay. In the chat room, we see this a lot during the day with people trading, um, you know, with us trading, uh, whether it's the ES or the Euro or whatever, when it's, when it's slow, we see the 786 bounce, 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 bounce. And I keep saying to the chat room, I'm not taking this, this meaning it's triggering at the zero line because it keeps doing these bounces on the 786s. And I say, I'm not taking this. What I'm looking for is a break above the 786, pull back, and a trigger at that point, because otherwise it could be a false breakout. And what, is, what usually happens at the end of the day is one or two people tell me, I got my head handed to me today. I got so chopped up. And I say, why? And they say, because I was fighting the chop that you told me not to, and because that's an impatient person, impatient trader, looking, you know, not willing to sit on the hands. So let's see what the higher time frame is doing on this. Um, 
which I did not open. So I think I can open a higher time frame chart on this though because the data is already. Sorry? Yeah, well, the thing is, if it had to load new data, I couldn't. But I think that it actually has the data for the weekly. Yeah, see, I didn't expect to be cut off from my data in here. So I, um, where is the, yeah, I just wanted to come up with a solution to this little dilemma. And it's not letting me. How many charts can you manage? Uh, oh, you mean what, live in the room? On this program. Oh, I've, I've never hit a limit on it. Depends on your computer. You know, if it, we used to, I used to have a problem with my old, my old Pentium 4, you know, that would slow down. Here we go, HD, let me see. But um, I haven't really had a problem with that recently. Once in a great while at the Fed news or something, you know, we'll get a little momentary whiteout or something for two seconds. Um, it also depends on if you're running a, like a heck of a lot of indicators. Um, Okay, no, I want to go create a new chart. Mark, could you address something about the announcements that come out, bad announcements, etc.? Well, short-term traders, I say stand aside. stand aside. Yeah. All of them just stand aside. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes you can look for a setup, for instance, on the bond or on currencies. I used to like to, I considered it a news trade, but it really wasn't. When I was doing early morning currency trading, what very often happens is the currency, and the bond does the same thing, the current, it takes off in one direction, consolidates, like you have 8.30 news. And uh, the euro will do the 8.30 news, the euro takes off, then around 9, I'm talking about Eastern time, um, 9, 9.20 or so, it's consolidating and holding support, and then it breaks out with a long side trigger for the second leg. That's, that's the safer way to do it, is catch the second leg. Bond is the same way. The stock index futures, usually you have to look for, um, usually have to look for, um, Three moves, reaction, counter reaction, and then the third, you know. But that's, you're better off just standing aside and, and waiting for it to stabilize and a trend. Here's our HD, our Home Depot um, weekly, and look what's happening. It's triggering a 100 line bounce. So that's very encouraging that that actually is going to break out to long side. Okay, so my problem with the congestion would be much more a factor, it would be much more of a problem if this CCI were also inside the 100 lines. But the fact is, this is a closed and confirmed, as I call it, 100 line bounce because the six period has already closed above zero. Okay, so this is probably going to make a new swing high, meaning that we don't have to worry about that, res that resistance. So what I would do is go back to the daily, place the stop under that 786, if I had taken that initial 5034, you know, I'm talking about over here. Wait a minute, now I've got two weekly charts. Who knows? Okay, here we go. Yeah, if I had taken this 5034 because the 100 line bounce was forming on the weekly, so you put your stop under the 786. And this is assuming a swing trade, not, not holding for a year, you know. Um, if you're holding and holding, you really like seeing that 100 line bounce on the weekly because it's confirming new swing highs. But I would, I'd have a relatively tight stop on this in case it's going to mess up. Um, Otherwise, if I'm not in it yet, I'd look for a Z, 5034Z long side trigger, and take that because we're going to then follow along with the 100 line bounce that's in play on the weekly and follow through to target. How often do we see a 100 line bounce trigger that fails? Not that often. What would you say on that off the top of your head? Not, not that often, right? The 100 line bounces are pretty reliable, I would say. So that's what we have on the weekly there. See? Yeah. When they fail, what I mean by fail is that this jiggles around or dips enough for the 50 CCI to break down below plus 100 before this makes a new swing high. It usually means there's quite a correction in store. Okay? So, you, you know, that's something to look for is the possibility of it failing. But that's like 5% of the time, or, you know, definitely in that range. Less than 10% of the time. Yes, Wari? I'm kind of thought that the move should have stats at the lower time frame. Mm -hmm. so if we are doing a 15 minute chart, and we have doubts, mm -hmm. then we should look at it 
Right. Yes. You can do that. You can do it. So if you're looking at a daily stock, then you'd be looking at what a 60-minute chart. You could, uh, like I said before, if you if you can get in on a 60-minute trigger. If you have the time to do that because you're trading full time, that's fine. Some people can only look at end of day charts for a stock. You know, I agree completely. I would much rather start it off that way, but but it depends on how long do you intend to hold the trade too. 15 minute chart. If that is what you consider your trigger chart, you're trying to hold a trade for at least a few 15 minute bars. So you want that to be in agreement with the trend that's beyond it. It's a matter of defining which one is your execution time frame. Are you saying your execution time frame is a five minute and your trend is 15? Okay. Okay. So in my, you know, it's just it's just a difference in our in the language we're using because what I would say then is that your 15 minute chart is your trend chart and your five minutes is your execution. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's it, and that that's fine. Um, and really, what I'm looking for is the idea that it's going to show you at least the possibility of that trigger on the 15 minute while it's triggering on the five. Okay, so yeah, I think we're in agreement on that. Um, something else I just noticed though on this on this weekly, it looks like if we take the prior high to low, I think the low is here. Yeah, doesn't matter, it'd be almost identical either low. This actually hit the last weekly target, see that? That's where it held, last weekly target. So it reminds us that we do have to look for the possibility of a Gartley on the next lower time frame, the daily. Okay, and this, like I said, was almost a Gartley. It just barely broke the 786. It might need more of a corrective move first. So if you don't, it's up to you, if you don't want to ride through that corrective move, it depends on your time frame. You know, I, I can't stress that enough because I can't say to anyone, put your stop at 26. Because the 786 is a 2633. I cannot say that to you because for all I know, this is a stock that you want to hold for 10 years. So you don't care about that Gartley possibly forming there. But if you're a swing trader and you're trying to get up to this target and you want to take your money and get out, I would have to say use a close stop here because we just hit the weekly target and we're dropping from it. So there's a possibility that it's going to correct a little bit more first. It can correct this much down to the Gartley support and still maintain the 100 line bounce on the weekly. That 100 line won't necessarily break. Then you'll get another long side trigger down here and it'll be a much nicer, larger target. The only reason I'm stressing that is because the higher time frame, the weekly, made a nice big target. I mean, on the daily, it looks like this. You know, we're talking about this entire swing. There was the target. So, like I've been saying for the past couple of days, where is the most likely place to look for that kind of Gartley, a more complex correction after hitting a target? Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. We hit the target. So you gotta be careful. If you're swing trading this, use, use a tighter stop. Again, if you listen to, the, to how I'm describing this, I'm telling you, those charts are telling me a story because I know the meanings of the levels. The charts are telling me a story. The trigger I like, that I've learned to read, is telling me how momentum is behaving at the levels that mean something to me. That's, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here, is that you study the materials we've gone over here this weekend, the meanings of each level. You can also look at a chart, you know, play with the lines for a few minutes. The technical stuff, that's why I've been de-emphasizing that. How do I get my CCI look exactly like yours? How do I draw that, you know, whatever. We can go over that while the markets are moving tomorrow. But I've been de-emphasizing that because there's plenty of time to learn about that. What, I, what I'm trying to spend time here imparting to you is how I get the chart to tell me a story. Okay? And that's the story I'm seeing here. And it's because of how these different time frames, the weekly and the daily, line up together and which levels are involved with that. So let's go to something else here. And I'm sorry about your DYN, but because uh, it might be interesting to look at. It's just a data issue at the moment. Uh, question. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious. Uh, have you charted the uh, option? Different strike price? Yeah, you know, I played with that a while ago. and, and to, yeah, it does. It does. But what's more, what's more useful in options is doing the underlying yeah. and timing. The timing work can be very helpful with options because. Is there anything that you've charted that just doesn't seem to work real well with your methodology, like 
grains or less? Grains are okay. I don't care for the trading them myself because of gaps and stuff. You know, I, I just not not that wild about grains. Um, uh, I have to say that on intraday, there was one thing I, d I discovered I just didn't like to chart, and it may have changed because I haven't tried it in, since 2006, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ daily and 45 minute is great, okay? Na daily charts, 45 minute, always been fine. When I tried to take it down to a shorter time frame, I found that there were times when the ES, the Russell, even the YM, we're nice and following everything, and the NAS would suddenly take off in one direction or another, but that could have been the period of time that I was doing it. Other things, that, you know, it's like I said yesterday, it's kind of cyclic. There are times when something just, you know, it's not extending, it's not going to any target. But that's just because it's consolidating, too. Then it'll follow really well. Um, I can't think of anything where I looked at it, you know, over a great period of time and said, gee, it's just not working. Um, it's not working, it never does work, it never has worked. I, I really can't think of anything like that. As far as something not working in cycles, um, that cycle was maybe for a month or six months? Or usually shorter, in my experience. I mean, you know, on a, on a, a usually when I say it's not working, I see that more on an intraday basis anyway. So that might last for a week or two. Um, a sign of it not working, what I mean by not working is if you have a period of time where, you know, again, even on intraday, where you're breaking the 786 levels and it's not extending to the targets. You break an upside 786 pointing at these targets, you break a downside pointing at these targets, and it doesn't go in either direction. I'm like, guess what? I can't read that chart because it's activated on both sides, the targets. I, yeah, I like, I like a chart where I can say there's a 786 break, like on the gold chart. The gold chart had a higher time frame, 786 break, pointing at those weekly targets, and, and people would say, short gold of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we were looking at that, you know. Yeah. But if I had breaks to the downside, looking at targets down there at the same time, that happens more on an intraday basis, though. I, I've definitely seen that. I remember working with a couple of trading partners where we'd be looking at the charts and I'd be like, it broke on both sides and it did it. And, you know, sometimes, like if you're trading stock index futures, it'll do that both on the ES and the Russell. You know, there'll be some confluence there. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't like to play golf, but maybe it's time to learn. You know, that was a dig at you. Thank you. Good, he's busy. Um, okay, what else do we got? No, I have a funny, a couple of funny golf stories that can wait. Uh, MSO, sure. Yeah, because I'm running short. I can't I just can't get data now without wasting a lot of our time rebooting. If anyone catches the person who disconnected my computer twice, hmm. I, oh, there's now here outside, isn't there? Yeah, Charlie. MSO. Okay, we actually. This was the MSO. Um, let me get rid, of, get rid of this. This was the MSO chart actually that I had set up to demonstrate, you know, a Gortley on a cheap stock. So I still had this set up. So we know that this worked earlier on. I don't have to lead through this whole setup. Let's erase everything and start this one over, as well. Get rid of our trend lines. Okay. Alrighty, let me scrunch this up a little bit. By the way, that's another thing we do a lot of is use technical terms. What I just did on the chart is called scrunching. Yeah, I scrunch the chart. Uh, I think we have a problem here with lack of symmetry since this low. Okay, yeah, you see, that's the largest swing. Uh, this one's iffy, I'm gonna use it anyway. Point is, it's far from price. Yeah, we have a problem. Certainly, at the moment, the um, uptrend has been violated big time. And what we need to do is a few things here. We need to go low to high. Okay, and let's take the next one over here. By the way, one of the reasons I decided about backing away from doing the timing work today is there are a few people who are not here this afternoon, but they will be here tomorrow. So I, and I didn't know that in advance. So I think it'll be a little more fair to them to do that to do that tomorrow. Okay, another obvious thing going on here. What do we have here? Anyone have a guess? Well, we have a swing low into the high. So a couple of things we can do with that. 
Yeah, possible crown if it rallies from here. Doesn't look like it really wants to rally to the 618. I have to put the 618 in. Retracement tool, high to low. It's even holding the 236. That's kind of weird. And that looks like it would bounce a little bit. But for this to be a crown, like I said this morning, I don't want to see a lot of noise in here. I want this to go right up to the 618 for a nice failure. And I'm not sure that's what's going on right now. Um, so we have some support here, 50% and a 1272. Symmetry breaking, you see, the thing is if we had done all of these little high to lows and projected from the high, what this is telling you, you see how that broke? What this is telling you is that the whole concept of the strength of a rally has broken. So right now, I'm not too comfortable with the idea that this is you know, gonna recover here. And what I would say is, if it were to rally, first of all, we can add some symmetry resistance. Same swing, low to high from the lowest low after. Okay, so that's reinforcing our 786. Um, I don't really care about the 236 there. I would say we have to watch the res pretty carefully with, it, with that degree of break of support. CCI is not, you had a little short side trigger here that lasted maybe a day before this bounce. Let's see what the weekly says. Let's see if that's a weekly trigger that we'd even think about. No. You see, I would not be looking at a weekly short, at a daily short side trigger now. Why? Because it's lining up for a possible weekly 100 line bounce. Where I say before, I don't take a short when the next higher time frame is on the other side of the 100 line. All right? This one's lining up for a weekly long side trigger. Why the heck would I be looking at a daily short? It's, I used to do that, and I, if I kept it up, I would have had to go bartend. <laughs> Okay, so instead we have to watch that 100 line. I don't care for this one just today because of the breakdown of the symmetry. Now another thing that can happen with the crown issue though, the crown doesn't, the, the support here doesn't only, uh, doesn't only point out the fact that it's a possible crown. It points out that the, term, that the decline has hit target. So it may recover from here, but because we have broken so much symmetry, support, I would really be looking at the major resistance on the way up. Mark? Yes? Another quick question. On the weeklies, uh, you still use 20 per period? Yes. Yes. Daily and higher. Yes. 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 It would have a good chance of working out. I mean, basically, if the if the four, sorry, the twenty on the on the daily gets back above zero, the fifty will be back above zero, and you'll have a 50, 50 20 long. You know why I'm saying fifty twenty instead of fifty fourteen, right? Okay. So you'd have the long, and that would be validating the idea that you're getting a weekly long on the hundred line, um, the hundred line, you know, weekly chart, hundred line bounce. So I would take that, but I'd still really keep an eye on the 618 to 786 back up. Um, and the signal there that you won't have a problem with it would be the 50 CCI breaking above 100 as we had on the um, your JPY. Okay, 786 was intact, but we broke above plus 100 on the CCI, so we're probably gonna lose the res. So that's my take on this one. I'm definitely leaning towards long side at the moment. I don't have a trigger this minute on the short term, but it's setting up for a long term longer side trigger. So I'd like to see it follow through though with a daily longer side trigger. An initial target here would um, nine, $9.71, okay? What? I'm sorry. Tomorrow morning, what would make you wear that trigger? 50, um, well, I'd want to see it uh, give us a 50-20 and maintain kind of through the day. I'd, what I'd do is I'd look for the 50-20. If it starts to rally tomorrow morning, um, me personally, I'd be opening a 30-minute chart, you know, 30-minute, maybe, maybe a 60-minute, depends on what, what it looks like, um, probably a 30. I like, stock, for the stock entries and initial management, I like the 30-minute chart, intraday. Um, so I'd look at that and I'd look for a trigger on the short term and I'd have the stop based on the 30-minute chart, you know, and then watch for this to follow through and get towards the close with a long side trigger. All right, so does that answer the kind of question you had in mind for MSO? Okay. Because I'm not sure if you're you you mentioned something about it, something happening in January. Well, so this. They're going to have a big thing that's going to be starting legally January 1st with Home Depot. Oh, okay. Just, uh, the whole product line is in Home Depot. 
Yeah. Well, that's so. So, do you have some astro stuff that's looking at? Yeah, it's interesting. You watch the two of them together; they're very similar. Cool. Yeah, that's why you know Tim and I have been working a lot on on uh, putting the, putting our heads together on the stocks, which is interesting. Um, but the, unfortunately, I can't reach into the future that far. You know, I could if we had a a, a break of a seven eight like I did on the gold. You know, we had a longer term break of the seven eight six, and I was saying, stop thinking about shorts because I'm aiming for that. Um, you know, in this case, I don't think that's what's going on. Actually, reminds me to scroll back a little bit. Here we go. Let's see what this is saying. Yeah, let's scroll back a little bit here and really be a little bit nicer about what's happening on the weekly. Okay, the weekly definitely is showing some good long side potential, but what is in the way? Okay, there's our same 786 kind of level from a larger swing. That's holding at the moment. If we can break above 819, it's going to activate these higher targets until we see how this is the swing into the low. Um, that would be the first real hurdle to this continuing to long side would be 819. 819 has to break to get us to the initial target on the weekly. So um, uh, yeah, what I was hoping to do, I was hoping that there'd be a swing high maybe here, so I could go, hey, we broke the seven, you know, the, the seven eight six, and now those higher targets are activated. But it's not the case right now. So what I would be relying on would be holding that um, weekly plus one hundred line as an indication that we should be taking long side triggers. And obviously, I think also there's a bunch of symmetry resistance here. It's interesting because the weekly CCI flipped to long side pretty quickly on this one. I would expect that with this much resistance, it would kind of take its time more. Yeah, there's a lot of res on this chart. But the momentum indications are definitely favoring long side. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Might be interesting. Might move enough to give us an idea. Uh, yes. Question. Sure. Uh, what would your recommendation be to uh, best uh, internalize this uh, methodology? Just review charts? Yeah, review charts. Um, I'm going to try to get you a few of the things, a few of the ones we worked on today, by the way, to um, help reinforce that. But start step by step. Again, um, you know, I threw a heck of a lot of you, a lot at you, a lot of you, yes. Threw a lot at you in the last couple of days. Start off with a sequence that, that we went over this stuff. Start with the symmetry. Okay? That one tool, the price expansion tool. You know, start with that one price expansion tool and running the symmetry levels in both directions on the chart if possible. And make sure you're comfortable with how you're doing that. Go over the rules of symmetry page, okay, to focus on, on uh, getting the symmetry correctly. Then start adding the retracements, the price retracements. And we're starting the price retracements. That's a very important thing, that sequence you just mentioned. Yes. That's why I have it in, the sequ in that sequence, you know, as we went over it. And the, uh, does you, well, it's the it's the order in which we went over the things. So, yeah. So one was symmetry. Yes, it's exactly in the order that it's in the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean take it down if you want. One was symmetry. Next was retracements. Yeah. Okay. Um, then then you want to look at the patterns, recognizing Gartleys, recognizing crowns. Then start looking at the triggers. Okay. One thing I don't want you guys to blame me for, though, is if you go, that Fibonacci stuff is too hard, I don't want to do anything about that, but I'm going to learn about the triggers. Mark, why did I just lose my shirt? Okay, I don't want, I don't want, you can't come back to me with that one because the triggers come last. The, actually, what's going to come last is tomorrow we're going to do the timing because, again, if we start to get into that now, it's murder. And timing can be confusing. It's not, I mean, it, timing was the one thing that took me a while to wrap my head around. Yes? Just for fun, could you do the timing on the last couple of swings there? Sure. For what? What am I looking for? I, if you have a timing high. Timing high? Seven. You think we should do um, maybe on the daily? Might be a little bit better. Oops. Or are you seeing something specific on the weekly? I'm not sure if I, I haven't done it enough. Okay, well, let's, let's see on the weekly. This is the kind of stuff we're going to go over tomorrow with the timing. So you got you a heads up on it now. I just messed up my toolbar. And Carlos probably left. Carlos, Carlos heard me and said, Mark messed up his toolbar. I am out of here to the other side of the state. He's gone. Yeah. Okay, let's see. 
these timing. I'll just give you a quick, you know, as long as as long as uh, this was brought up. With timing, what we're doing is we're taking the same ratios and we are applying them to the time axis of the chart instead of the price axis. We're connecting just the same way you would with price retracements. We're connecting pivots, lows to highs and highs to lows, and we are project we are extending out into the future the Fibonacci ratios in time. And we're looking for a confluence of, um, actually I see something here. We're looking for a confluence of um, several of these Fibonacci timing factors to come together just as we look for confluence in the price levels. No, that did not work. I thought that might. Um, let's see what else we have here. This guy had potential... Right, I think I have to go back a little bit more in time. I'm not seeing a confluence. Hey. Yeah. This one, this last one? Yeah. The projection, yeah, that's what I was hoping to. We can do it the other way, though. We can do, yeah, Will, Will is um, a student of timing in the, in the chat room also. Um, what? Uh, well, what I'm going to do here is low to low connected from intervening high. Let's see if that gives us anything different. No, it's worse. So the thing about the timing work, by the way, is it's either there or it isn't. If you, you know, if you, basically at this point, I'm seeing if there is any anything where I can find a timing confluence, um, because someone asked me and they're interested, so I'm putting a little extra effort into it. But usually, um, once you start looking for the timing swings, it jumps out at you or it doesn't. It's either there or it isn't. Um, this is the only thing I see that might be might show some potential, and even this I think misses. Uh, it's a week off. I'm not thrilled. I'm just not seeing it. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So we'll go into that in more detail tomorrow. Let me see what other charts we might. Any questions so far about the chart review stuff that we've been doing? Um, why don't we take a look real quick for currency folks at the current situation on some of the currency charts? Okay, because you know that'll get us set up for tomorrow if we're looking at currencies as well. Just go over a couple of the ones that we usually look at. Uh, this, and, yeah, okay, yeah, that's when we we have that running live in the chat room too. And I think I took, yeah, you know what? I took all the data off this chart because I figured I would rerun it with you guys, rerun the support. And yeah, well, this is just a picture of a, you know massive uptrend. What's important here, though, also is the weekly. Okay, the weekly has broken the intervening 786 up to that target, okay? What chart is this? This is a weekly Australian in US dollar, you know, or vice versa. Yeah, so um, this is definitely still showing. I thought we might get hung up at that 786, but we didn't. Um, very, very strong uptrend still. All symmetry support holding above the plus 100 line with the 50 CCI. If you were thinking about anything short here, it would have to be really, well, it would have to be very short term trade to think about short. Yeah, and we had actually, um, you know, we, we've, we've surpassed a bunch of targets here. And, um, you know, on the, on the daily, it just kept skyrocketing through the targets. And you know we can, we have to rebuild our support. Uh, what I'm doing now is just skipping the ones that I can tell broke, or obviously if it's you know the the low here is is higher than that low. Remember we have to go to the lowest low after. So I'm just looking to see what we have to do here. Yes. Why are we always having pairs like uh, Australian and U.S. or Canadian and U.S.? Why are you not just Australian? Because Forex is foreign exchange, okay? And so every currency, the quote you're seeing is the currency as it is denominated in another currency, okay? It's the relationship between the two currencies that we're looking at in Forex. This one versus that one. How many United States dollars are there in an Australian dollar is what we're looking at. Would you have just the Australian dollar in other than Forex? Well, what would it be denominated in would be the point then. In other words, if it's an Australian dollar, it's always worth a dollar, right? right. So the chart would be flat. You would need to, you need to have a base currency that it's denominated. You could have Australian dollar versus peso. 
That would be an interesting chart. <laughs> but um, you need to have another currency. You need something to compare it. And like, think about it this way. When we look at a gold chart, you're not looking at, how, at just gold. You're looking at gold in dollars. Okay? So when you're looking at an Australian dollar chart, you're looking at an Australian dollar in U.S. dollars. Okay? It's the relationship between the two. Thank you. I just made it up too, and I'm going to try to remember it. Yeah. No, it's the same thing. I mean, the same thing with um, with the stock index futures. The the we're looking at how much in U.S. dollars is the stock worth. It's you know. How often do you trade the currency futures? You know, I haven't done that recently. I used to. Um, I really like to. I really used to like to trade the euro, but one of the reasons the euro, you know, the six E. One of the reasons why I, I stopped doing that was um, I was trading the six E more when forex was more of a wild, wild west situation where where you had you know ten to one fly by night brokers versus. Um, Brokers you could trust, you know. So um, and that's CME regulated, and it's cool, and it follows, you know, it follows the euro. The, the euro is the euro, whatever. I don't think it really matters. I, in some ways, I like the futures because um, they are regulated. You know, spreads are always tight, and you get to trade with a real broker. Um, a lot of people want to stay with the forex because it's it's uh, you, you have more control over your leverage, which is a double-edged sword. Of course, you can get in trouble that way too. Um, I don't think it really matters. Which one? And, and I mean, we've had it to the point where, because in the chat room we have uh, Euro USD and we have Euro Futures, the, the, the 6E we run. And sometimes the levels are identical. I mean, really, to the tick or PIP. So it, it really doesn't matter in, in action that way. I also got into the people I was trading with at midnight, you know, online. We were hanging out and, and we just got into, we were doing the Euro. Advantage to the Euro too, you can use tick charts and volume charts. If that's an essential part of your triggering methodology, you can use them for that. And we were doing that 500 volume, 3000 volume on the Euro 6E. You can't do that on the, on the futures because it's not centralized data. All right, so well, here's the Aussie. Basically, we're broken through a heck of a lot of targets. What's with this interim guy? This might be interesting. I think I might have missed this one before. There's a nice little swing high in here. And what if we said high to low? Aha. So we have an interim target we're at right now. Sorry? Well, did it close above it? Yes, it did, actually. Okay. So, it, And it wouldn't be that important to me anyway because we broke the 786. You know? So that's not even helping too much. But the next target we want to look at is here. It's At least I don't have to only look at the one all the way up there on the weekly. We have another interim target here. What I what I'd think instead would be more of a pullback maybe um, and that way we be able, we can start it now. We go high to low here, and as this pulls back, these targets will adjust upward. All right, because this this is very extended at the moment. I mean, I, I I can't say I see a reason to get out of a long term long, but I wouldn't initiate one. Not a longer term trade right now because as extended, I'm not even in a good position for a long side trigger. It's telling me it's more likely to pull back. Let me see what the uh, intraday is doing. Yeah, here's this is a this was a, actually a corrective move short that we were looking at. Um, I had this is the same chart from the chat room for the last few days. The idea being that once it broke through the 786 to downside, it started to rally, and I was saying look for another short side trigger 5034Z to ride it down again. Saying so it hit the initial cluster target cluster area there, but we still have the outstanding 1272 made it more likely we're going to see another push down. And now we just go like this for the night. If you're trading it on a 60 minute time frame, you want to know about this target. Break down below the 786 here. Okay, that's the danger zone at the moment. Notice that we're below the minus 100 line, so that's probably going to break. As long as we stay below here, if it bounces, you just want this to hold below minus 100. Initial target is down here, the one the 1272 from the same swing. In my way of thinking, 
if you're going to take the shorts now, they're very counter trend, and you need to work for the shorter term targets only. Okay, because we do not have anything even remotely resembling a short side setup on the daily. Okay, so that's you know that's no no I would need more of a pullback to go long because it looks you know it's it, it very it, it's very imminent. As a matter of fact, someone in um, in the chat room is trying to buy for his IRA longer term um, FXA. You know, which is which is essentially an ETF on on the Aussie, and and he's like pull back, pull back, pull back. And what I want to say to him is, why didn't you buy it down here? <laughs> you know, but uh, so so now he's now he's dealing with the fact that it's very extended. But I, I think it needs a pullback at this point. And something I always do, of course, and you guys probably do too, is you look at the dollar to see what the dollar is going to do because all these currencies we're looking at, if they're denominated, you know, if, we're, if this USD and that USD and the other USD, might as well look at USD. USD is down to some pretty important targets. So, you know, might have a flip there. Um, so, yeah, that's the Aussie. Let me see what else we have here. Um, oh, I can show you something that didn't work out. Oh, this one is working out. Um, here is a GBP, JPY, I think. Yeah, we talked about that a little while ago. But there was a short side setup. Here's, here's failure. Here's something not working out. There was a short side setup on the 60 minute into the low. Yeah, oh, that was my note, note to the chat room. And let me just show you here. This is the, you know, just so you don't think I'm trying to say this stuff always works. You see this swing down? Okay, I can actually reproduce this now, what I, what I was talking about at that point. We, uh, we had, at that point, I was looking for additional short side targets. Okay, I remember this really well because I did not expect this one to fail. What happened was, this bounced at the intervening 786. So I was saying, you know what? I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen here because the 786 held. All right, and the nice thing about this stuff is when it really works, it did hold like to the pip. All right, so it held, but then it came up to res that was up there at that point that I don't need to bother reproducing. And we had this interim, I took the interim low against the 786, and it was something, it was like that. It was somewhat, one of those is the exact high. I'm, I'm trying to illustrate a point here, so it doesn't really matter which, you know, which is the exact. It came down and broke the 786. Again, this is a 60 minute chart. And just barely made, I think, the tar I think it was right there. The target is right there against the 1272. And me and my infinite occasional lack of wisdom said, well, it broke the longer term 786 though, so we really should be looking at this 1272 target. And instead the interim target overrode it and took hold and reversed the pattern. So at least there were, this is a good example though also of why it's important to manage your trade at any target, not just the main target we're looking for. Matt, usually what would happen here instead is you get a bounce, new res would hold, and then it would go down to here. But this is a case of where the 786 leads to the corresponding target did not work. Okay? So now we're looking at an upside pattern here. You know, this, we, we did this chart together before. Um, I'm trying to see what else we might have that's interesting. A lot of these guys are extended. This one has a little timing. This is a, a Euro USD daily. Right? And the reason I left this, this target broke on the daily, you know, just a few days back. But I left it in there just to remind folks that we are in the target zone. You know, in other words, we have made the target. Sometimes when I show this to a client and I take off the target, um, they forget that we're not always aiming for the 1618, we're aiming for the 1272. So I want to point out the fact that this did make the target. And there were a couple of timing factors up here also that, that raise the question as to whether or not this has a correction and how much of a serious correction may be involved. And you know, we're looking at the possibility that it might even come down as far as the 382. Um, I have to see what happens at that 50 CCI 100 line, of course. And I think the 60 minute has a similar thing to what we saw in the Aussie because obviously these guys, you know, trade kind of similarly. Kind of, kind of. Where's my 60 minute? Can you see that? Can you see that? No, I don't. And unfortunately, I can't get the data going now, you know, like I said, because of the disconnection. I'd have to reboot everything. You know, I can, I can load that tomorrow once I reboot. Okay, oh, I think this is over here. Yeah, if I hadn't gotten disconnected, yeah, here's our euro. 
60 minute is really basically kind of chopping around. Here's, here's a case where obviously it broke the intervening 786 up to the next target. It's not following through. See, here's some chop. This is kind of interesting to me anyway. We broke the 786 upside. See? Not making target. But we also broke the 786 downside. Okay, so this is a case where you could say um, the FIB stuff isn't working. Like I said the other day though, it's always telling you something. And what this is telling me is it doesn't know what the heck to do. It's, it, it is respecting the daily target right now. What I need to do to take even a short term trade here, see I'm not, it's, it's triggering now. Uh, no, it's not, I'm wrong. This is not a well formed trigger. This is not a well-formed trigger because this was not within 50 points of zero. This 14 CCI was not up to the plus 100. This does not fit the category criteria for any trigger in particular. So it's telling me it doesn't have enough momentum to go either way. It's, it's got a problem. And the fact now that we broke 786s on both sides set, does not allow me to focus on one side or the other. So what I'm going to do now is take this new little swing here, low to high, and with a lack of a decent trigger, it's quite possible that these guys are going to hold. If it breaks through instead and we make a new swing low, we'll have all kinds of new resistance, okay, because there'll be a new low and we'll be able to go low to high from new low. And on a bounce, I'd look for a well-formed trigger for a short side, short-term short side, because the daily is still way long side. Does that make sense? You guys following? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was, yeah, let me show you an example, by the way. This is in the workbook. I was going to cover this after timing, but since I just mentioned that's a poorly formed trigger, I want to show you the, the result, the kind of thing that can happen with a poorly formed trigger. Um, this was something that we had looked at last week. Um, this, this is the yen, USD yen. Okay, and I looked at this and I said, you know what, the resistance is holding really nicely. This res is holding. Um, and we have this outstanding downside target here. I still say if you're holding this, if you're short longer term, you're good to go. But if you're looking to take a short, a swing short, for example, off this res, if you look at these triggers, the, this is 50, 20, and six period CCI. If you look at those triggers, positions, and look at the four triggers in the manual that we went over, this doesn't fit the criteria for any of them. And with the 50 CCI having just broken back above minus 100, what can happen then is that it then serves as support as well. Okay, so what happens then is this does look like it's trading down, trading short. You still might like to take a short on a shorter time frame. Depends on your time frame that you're trading. But on a daily, if you're saying, oh good, next target's down here, um, there's a potential problem. Because this may serve as support along with one of our retracement levels. So as a reminder, you know, I bolded the 786 downside because it's much more important than usual in this case. Again, this was live when I shot it. I figured I'd show you guys this, and if it plummets from here, I go sometimes without a clear trigger, it trades well anyway, and this is something I would have missed. But instead, I think what happened, if I recall correctly, is it did get hung up there. Wrong button. See, Carlos leaves the building and I mess up stuff with the program. Yeah, see, this is what happened. Right, I did look at this. Um, see that? This is why you have to combine the triggers with the fib work. That res broke. We had that nice symmetry resistance and it broke. And that's what happened was once we regained above the 50 CCI minus 100 line, there was no trigger. This was not high enough for 5034Z trigger. This was not high enough for a 5014 trigger. There was no trigger. So if I was thinking about a daily short side trigger, it was impossible. Minus 100 line held, broke the res, and now we have a Gartley res pattern on the daily. Okay, because that's what happens when you're at an extreme and you don't have a well-formed trigger. It's telling you that it probably is gonna give you a more complex corrective move. Okay? So that's something that's why, you know, I'm telling you, we spent a long time quantifying those specific triggers for CCI. 
All right, they're, and they are not vague. It has to be within this value, or within that value, or it probably won't follow through. Let's just see what this is doing on the uh, intraday, because I don't see it respecting the Gartley res right now either. Uh, this button. Okay, so here we are on the intraday. Yeah, and this is a 60 minute. Uh, okay. Okay, this is still up in the air. This is triggering a 5014 long at this point. And what we need to do then, and I would, I'd actually do this on a shorter time frame just so it's more legible, but we need to go um, high to low. And let's see, because it's a 5014 long, because you see the 14 did originate at the minus 100 line. It just is kind of sloppy and following through here. We, our 50 CCI is under minus 100, so we should pay attention to the idea that we might get hung up and still respect the daily Gartley. The daily Gartley is good um, up to here. I think it's 91.447. Yeah. So this might bounce a little bit more. It might fail here at the 786. Okay. It might fail at the 786 because, again, we haven't broken above plus 100 here. So I'm going to leave this chart like this, and we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Okay. If this were to fail at the 786, we'd have a Gartley support pattern as well. We have daily Gartley resistance, 60 Gartley support, which means no one knows what the heck to do right now. It's indecision on two time frames. Breaks below the daily, the intraday Gartley um, support, then the daily Gartley res is playing out. Okay, so that's what's going on here. But my point in bringing up this chart more so was to was to show the danger of trying to take ill-formed triggers. And that's what happened here. Came down and bounced instead. There was no, no follow through, and the CCI was part of that story there as well. Mark, yes? Can you take a, when you get done here, can you take a look at the pound dollar and tell me whether you think there's an entry point? I'll take a look at it right now. That one I have loaded. Oh, is this, this is actually running the data, isn't it? Oh, it's the daily. I can't. No, I'm, that's not my point. I was. Uh, I, I'm. I think I missed my uh, entry. Okay. Well, let's take a look. No, I just realized I'm confused about which connect, which data is working for me and which isn't at the moment. I think the intraday is working, but the daily charts are not. Um, here we go. Okay, GBP. Oh, well, here's our. That's, that's the Gartley support. Well, what kind of entry are you looking for? Looking for 20, 25 pips, and I think I should have gone in at 6,300. They didn't go in. Well, uh, what kind of time frame do you like to trade off of? Uh, looking at, um, I have a 15 minute up and I have a 1 minute up. Okay. Uh, let me see how this is, what's going on here. I just want to make sure I've been talking about that current data. Yes. All right. Well, first of all, I'd have to see what the deal is with nearby support and resistance. That's okay. the. So we're dealing right now with you know we're back below that Gartley res. I don't care about that because it has broken 60 minute. Um, well, he's he's working 15 and 15 and one. I'm not doing a one minute chart. That's for sure. But we can take a look at a 15. Um, the thing is, I, I, I don't. Are you talking about a trigger based upon the triggers I use, or are you talking about something that you're using? Well, I don't know. I, I just you know it get it get down on the open. Uh huh. It um, met a resistance point. Well, for me here, if you the close the tighter I'll, tightest I'll take this is a three minute chart. Okay. I'm not going down to a one minute chart. I have a trigger on the three minute chart that was right around 6300. Okay, it's right, it's right here, it's 5034, 50, mm -hmm. long, okay? So you have that trigger. If we step up to a 60 minute, we have plenty of support. 60 minute might be working towards a 5014 long. We'd have to take a look at the 15 and see if that's in support of the trade. 15 minute, come here. I'm trying to work this to what you've been teaching us. I understand that, I'm trying to help you. Five minutes, we're gonna be done in five minutes actually. Right. Okay, yeah, we're gonna wrap this up and, and uh, uh, be done for the day. Um, 15 minute, uh, yeah, okay, so I had an entry, let me give you the price, <coughs> if I was going to take that long. And I 
have to say it was here. It was more like, um, it was a little, a little closer to 6305, 6306 max. Mostly I'm early, I buy a few pips. Okay. But I'm still thinking about it. I don't know if it's going to turn on me. Well, I wouldn't suggest that you actually take a trade now and here. Okay. I'll stay in here for a No, you're not going to because they're going to shut the wireless off. Okay. So if you want to play with your thing, go up in your room. That's why I'm telling you. Yeah. No, we had that happen in one of the Orlando workshops where this woman was just about holding onto the desk like this because she got in a trade as I was talking. That was a 2006 workshop. And, um, and she was hold, I mean, literally, we were trying to, you know, and the thing was they were going to charge Fibonacci Trader another $500 to leave the wireless running for later. And then it, yes, and, and they came in, the, the, the maintenance guys came in to unplug the wireless. No, no, I'm in the trade. Turned out she had one mini lot. And she, so she was waiting for another $3 before it hit the target. And the next morning she was really, really annoyed. She said, I had to exit my trade because it, you want $3? I'll give you three dollars, okay? So I'm sorry, you're gonna ask. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little confused about most stocks. Uh, okay. Targets, okay. I see the targets, mm -hmm. okay, great. But, you know, gee, it's not working out. I want to get out of this trade. Yeah. Uh, like tomorrow, yeah, well, probably tomorrow because I think, I think we're shutting off here. But in general, the idea is that you want to use the symmetry for a stop whenever possible. Okay. All right. By whatever, whenever possible, I mean if it's too far for good money management for you, you either have to step down to a shorter time frame to get closer symmetry where there might be more swings to use, or you use a 786 if that works. We'll be able to talk about that live tomorrow, though. But for example, on this chart, you know, let's say you had that three minute long. Um, you know, on the on on the GBP, you might take this little swing high to low here, 6300 symmetry. Put your stop at 6297. Okay, because that's the nearest sim. It's less it's less than 20 pips even, which I like to find on a short term. You know, so that would be good money management. And also, you know, you don't have to wait for your stop to be hit. If this curves around, and you know. You get a danger sign, not, not work it out. But the idea is, if your sim breaks, it means that the reason for being in the trade is invalidated. Yeah. So anyway, that's it for today. I think we're going to 